Hi, my name is Zach Griffith, and I'm here to present to you the process that I went through in getting the GAR grant for the 2014-2015 school year. I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. I am a first year teacher here at Akron Public Schools. Uh, I'm just entering into uh, my second year. I wrote this during my first year. I teach engineering at the high school and I collaborated with three other teachers, uh, an English teacher, a physics teacher, and a history teacher on this grant. So I want to talk a little bit about the process that I went through to obtain this grant. The first thing we did was a thought process with our school because I found out about it from some of the people from GAR and I was a little anxious to write this grant. I was in my first year, uh, I had a lot on my plate and they came in, sat down with me at my school and convinced me that this was the right thing for our school. They were super supportive with me. Uh, they told me that I could do it, they gave me confidence, they gave me the support that I needed to be able to go through the process of seeing if it was worth the time of my school and myself to do this. So that's where it all started. Support from my staff, support from GAR. Once I realized I had that support, I had to go into the thought process of what we wanted to do this grant on. I wanted to collaborate with my fellow coaches. I wanted to make it interesting to the learners. I wanted to involve the community. Uh, and I wanted it to be something that I could be proud of as a teacher. The history, the English, and the physics department uh, all had common themes throughout the class. And I was to be the support part of these themes. The theme that we decided to go on was the Holocaust. So what we did was all sit down and decide what piece of this Holocaust puzzle we wanted to all do in our classes and then how we put those pieces together into the GAR proposal. The history department would use Google Maps and have the tale of a family that would move from one internship camp or one intern camp to, an, to the next and be able to travel either unseen or free other people within those camps and they would show the distances between them and what happened at each of those camps. The English class they would write journal entries and uh, narratives of the stories that these people would have as they go from one camp to another or through a sewer system. Uh, the physics would talk about the flashlight that they would make in engineering, the electricity that would uh, be produced from it in either the camps or in the sewer system and how the electricity would work working through the flashlight that they would make. From there we had to make connections. Uh, the first connection that we made was with GAR and the support that they gave us was immense through this part of the networking process. The second connection that we made was with our expert. So we looked online and found a bunch of great people who were willing to talk about their experiences with the Holocaust and we narrowed it down to one um, great woman who talked about her story of how they would live in the sewers and collect whatever they could to be able to just survive uh, where they were at. So that's what we decided to, to really centralize our thoughts about. From there we decided to take a small group of students, one class of physics, one class of engineering, uh, one class of history, and do a trial run so that we could see if it was worth our time or not to do with a much larger group the next year with the funds that we would receive from GAR. So I want to talk a little bit about that process. Uh, at this school we use what's called a PBL process or problem based learning uh, in which the kids come in and they watch the video of this Holocaust survivor and from there they found they talked to us about what they knew 
and what they needed to know. For example, in my class, they needed to learn how to build a flashlight. So we had three parts of our class, math and science, software, and workshop. So they had to decide what they needed to learn about in each one of those classes. And then they had to come up with a constraint. You know, what, what are the rules to making this flashlight? How big did it have to be? How well did it have to work? Did they have to build a maze that these kids had to go through at the end? From there, the kids had to uh, do research and get training from their individual coaches here at the school of what they needed to learn. So we went through a couple week process with that and the kids uh, learned about what they needed to know. From there, the engineering students in particular had to go through the design process. They had to generate concepts. They had to get brainstorm ideas. Uh, they had to make a decision matrix so that they could decide what the best idea was, make inventor drawings of that idea, and then physically build the flashlight and then put it into uh, play. They made a maze inside my room and had to actually crawl through the maze with their flashlight uh, and get out to the other side. After the learners presented all of their ideas and then shared their ideas with the other classes, my kids took their flashlights to some of the other classes. Uh, some of the English kids came into my class and actually went through the maze. Uh, my engineering kids went to uh, the history class and looked at the maps and were able to travel from one place to another uh, on their Google Maps to see what the uh, land was like, what the environment was like with that. This is very important to us because I wanted them to see that they were not by themselves and that other people were doing like things that they were. And from there we collaborated then within the teachers and we said, yes, this is something we want to do. We are confident we can get this grant and we're going to write this grant. So we decided to write the grant, wrote the grant, and then looked to GAR for some more support. So the ladies came back in and talked on the phone many times, emailed a bunch of times, and actually helped us with deciding which grant was right for us, because we thought we wanted a $10,000 grant. And they told us for what we are trying to do, a $5,000 grant was more applicable. And that was great, because we may, maybe have not have got the grant if we were applying for the incorrect one. So we got the correct support we needed during the time we needed to do that. So I did what they said, applied for the $5,000 grant, and after a few weeks of, of definite sweating and you know, waiting by my email and seeing if I got it, finally they told me, yes, I got the grant, but that wasn't even the end. Once we got the grant, uh, we got to go to a reception in which we got to meet all the other people that got grants from GAR, which I really appreciated. It was really nice, good food, you know, good Good, good party to go to, good nice reception, and see what their story was too. So you, now you had that network of other people that you could really feel a part of that you could write then a grant again, or you could tell other people in your community, other people in your school, this is something that's worth your time. I'd like to say thank you to all the people at GAR for all of their support, and to thank you for everyone that was involved in this project.